Welcome back to another weekly market and financial update. So if you don't know already, Vision Retirement sends out a weekly market commentary every week to everyone's email addresses. If you're not on the list to receive our newsletter, then you can go directly to our website, www.visionretirement.com. You can scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. And at the bottom of the page, there are a bunch of different helpful links and resources. And one of those links is the weekly market commentary. And if you click that link, you'll see our most current article. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we published what I felt was a pretty interesting article this week all about preferred stocks or preferred securities. So I wanted to unpack that with everyone because we did receive a couple of questions on it. And preferred securities can definitely be complex financial instruments, but once you understand them, they make a lot of sense as to why investors would put their money in them in the first place, right? So what is a preferred security? Well, preferred security is a hybrid security between a blend of a stock or equity and bond or fixed income, right? A stock or equity is buying ownership in a company and participating directly in the growth or the poor performance if the stock goes down of that company, right? And a bond or fixed income is you're lending money directly to a company or an organization, and in return, they're providing you a fixed payment or a fixed interest rate that you can collect on at a stated period of time. It could be monthly, semi-annually, quarterly, annually. They'll tell you when you uh, provide the loan directly to them. So again, a preferred security is kind of a hybrid, right? So meaning that you will see or notice that if you own one, the performance will kind of swing with the market, right? Similar to what a stock might do. On the flip side, preferred securities also offer stated payments directly to their holders. So similar to a bond where you would receive a regular interest payment, preferred stockholders receive regular interest payments as well. What makes these relatively attractive to investors is because of the fact that you might want to be able to participate in the stock market growth, their ups and downs over a long period of time, knowing that it's more likely to have better stock growth than bond growth, while also enjoying regular income or dividend payments from these preferred stocks. So that's why a lot of people invest in them. And where did they come from, right? So preferred securities are primarily issued by banks. And if you've been following the news re recently and what's been trending, you'll probably have heard that there might be some financial issues amongst banks, right? We've seen this sort of as a recurring theme over the last couple of years. And then people would ask me, you know, Ben, I, I've heard on the news that investing in banks right now is really not the place to be, right? So preferred stocks actually carry risk with them, right? And the risk is that if the company that issues the preferred stock goes out of business, they file for bankruptcy, then it's pretty unlikely that a preferred stockholder will actually get their money back. And that's because they're they're really not the top of the list, right? Senior debt holders or bondholders and creditors, they're going to get their money back first if there's anything left over. Preferred stockholders are toward the bottom of the list. They're above regular stockholders, but they're below the bondholders and the creditors that would get paid out first. So there's a chance that a preferred stockholder may get some money back, but it's more likely than not that they would. So hearing what's been going on, right, we know that commercial real estate loans have struggled, right? Ever since COVID, office rental spaces have been down significantly, and there have been delinquencies on loans, which could cause some concern. So let's break this down a little bit. So really, most of the commercial real estate loans that cover office spaces is actually about just shy of 20% of all commercial real estate loans. And these are stemming mostly from small banks and regional banks, right? A large bank would have $100 billion of assets or more. Think your, your Chases of the World, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. And these types of banks are really the ones issuing preferred securities for people to buy. On the flip side, if a smaller regional bank is issuing a preferred security, then the risk of owning it might be higher, but you should get a higher fixed rate of return or fixed interest payment over time, right? So the lower the risk, the lower the fixed payment, but that might be worth it to a lot of folks knowing that there is some 
safety of principle, not guaranteed, of course, but more safety of principle going with a larger national bank that's issuing a preferred stock versus a smaller bank that if they ever did experience some sort of financial trouble, then it's more likely than not that they might not be able to recover, right? Larger banks have a much stronger chance of being able to recover from these types of issues. So again, you might be hearing in the news that there are some struggles. Again, it's really just stemming from office loans, other loans that are covering commercial real estate, think hotels, malls, things like that. Those loans are doing perfectly fine. Those loan balances are okay. Even the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, has come out and said, you know, it might be some time that we see banks sort of have these issues with the small office loans, but over time, the other loans for portfolios that they hold are doing okay. And in turn, preferred stocks are going to be okay, okay along with it. So if preferred stocks are something you've sort of heard about, I hope this video helps provide some more light and some more education on it. Again, we've gotten a lot of questions on it. So if you've been following our weekly market commentary, kudos to you. Thank you so much for reading it. We really appreciate it. And if anyone has any other questions on preferred stocks, you are always welcome to reach out to us directly online. You can email us, you can call us, whichever you prefer, and we'd be happy to speak with you. So thanks again for tuning in this week and enjoy the beautiful weather we're having. And I'll see everyone next week for another update. Take care.